few introduction about a few people sitting on the days here. Uh, myself, Advocate Shabna Madan Khan. I am the Advocacy and Program Manager for Project Pearl. Uh, before we begin uh, uh, the session, I would uh, like to just uh, talk about Project Pearl and who we are and what have we been doing. So, uh, Project Pearl was launched on January 2023 by, in the eminence presence of the IGP, the Mayor, the President of Children's Court and the Director of uh, Department of Child Welfare and Committee. We are an initiative working in the field of human trafficking and human trafficking in Goa. Uh, we are here to support the initiatives of our government, their various organizations and all stakeholders to make a society free from all forms of slavery, discrimination and exploitation. This year, Project Pearl has conducted over 50 uh, school awareness sessions, uh, programs on uh, Juvenile Justice Act, POXO Act, uh, Rights and Responsibilities of Children, Child Labour, Child Marriage, and we have covered around more than 1,000 children in these schools. Uh, we have also um, conducted various awareness sessions in the childcare institutions and covered seven CCIs and covered 100 children in these CCIs. We have visited around six to seven communities in the North Goa district and we have conducted awareness programs and activities for around 1,000 people in the community. With the assistance of Panjim Police and the CCP, we have been able to rescue 20 homeless men in the city of Panjim and we have restored and rehabilitated them back to the society. This is all with the support of the government organizations. We cannot do it alone. We have conducted various training sessions for 500 stakeholders of the CWC, the Goa Police, the JJB, the CCIs, teachers, students, law college students, BSW students uh, on the topics of JJ Act, POXO Act, POSH, uh, ITP Act, and that includes all the stakeholders. Uh, for today's uh, session, we, we have a special training just for the counselors of all the schools and uh, uh, counselors from the child care institutions. They are in charge, teachers, they are counselors. And as you can see, we have a banner out here which says training on Juvenile Justice Act and POXO Act. We believe that it's not enough to train ourselves once, but we need to hear it time and again, and only then we can understand the nuances about the act. All right, so. Um, we have amongst us the chairman of the Goa Education Development Corporation, Mr. Govind Parvatkar. He is a MA, LLB, and BA. Uh, he has been in the profession of teaching through the primary, secondary, and college for 34 years. He has been an active member of uh, social work from 1989. So it's a pleasure to have you here. and. Uh, he has been very instrumental in deputing uh, more than 75 counsellors that we all are sitting over here from the uh, Goa Education Department uh, Corporation. And these are all the counsellors and he has been kind enough to acknowledge our invitation and deputy you all here. And we believe that uh, you will take something from here and use it in your daily lives. Thank you sir for coming. Uh, a warm welcome. I request uh, Jessica Pereira, who's a caseworker from Project Pearl, to uh, hand over the moment to, to serve. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jessica. I request Lasha Soman to hand over the bouquet of last to Mr. Parvakkar as a token of appreciation. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. Uh, amongst us, we also have a dignitary on the days uh, who has been with us since the inception of our launch of our project. And she has been coming right from Bombay. This is the third time 
she being here and she is a voracious speaker on the Juvenile Justice Act in Foxo Act. And uh, we are delighted to have Advocate Sazia Mukaddam from Justice Venture India, Mumbai. Uh, she is a seasoned human rights lawyer with over 13 years of experience, specializing in advocating for the rights of women and children. She represents victims of trafficking, sexual exploitation and violence, as well as initiates PILs and writs in the Bombay High Court to improve the justice system for her clients. Currently serving as case work director, Maharashtra at Shamta, she works on rehabilitating women affected by violence and is a part of the NIA network, collaborating to address injustice. Additionally, she conducts capacity building workshops on topics such as violence against women, child sexual abuse, and human trafficking for various stakeholders. It gives us immense pleasure as Project Pearl once again for the third time, welcoming Shazia Mukaddam, and I request Swanka Kumba, our program officer, to hand over a bouquet to Shazia as a token of appreciation. Last but not the least, we have amongst us our director and founder for Project Pearl, Mrs. Bina Martin Phillip. She is the founder and director of Project Pearl and one of the board members of BLC Goa. We start by quoting her words We can't allow thousands to go unseen and unheard. Mrs. Bina Martin Phillip is spearheading the Project Pearl and many other projects of BLC since its inception in 2001 in the state of Goa. BLC runs three CCIs and one aftercare home. We provide pro various support to 350 families affected by HIV AIDS, a rehabilitation center for homeless men for the city of Panjim. She is one of the members of Posh Internal Committee for Food Corporation of India for Goa State. Mrs. Bina was one of the panelists for the recent International Roundtable on Tackling Child Sexual Exploitation and Rape and Sexual Assault conducted in Panjim in collaboration with British High Commission and UK Home Office, chaired by the senior advocate and former additional Solicitor General of India, Dr. Pinky Anand. Ms. Bina believes that every woman is already empowered within and all we need to do is discover their destiny and purpose. She is deeply compassionate and strong-willed to see equality of opportunity and financial freedom for each individual in our country. I request Ma'am Bina to kindly say a few words for us. Thank you, Shabnam. It's my great joy to be here this morning uh, in the presence of the uh, chairman of GEDC, um, uh, Mr. Govind Padwakar, and um, our dear Shazia, ma'am, who's been uh, like a family to us, who's been helping us with training in different uh, areas for even for Project Pearl, and uh, we've been doing uh, training for police department and for all the stakeholders as well. And uh, as uh, already um, Shabnam Ma'am has already introduced um, Project Pearl and Benessa Life Center. Last 22 years we've been in uh, Panjim helping uh, children and women in distress. Last 22 years we've, uh, we've been running homes for children, uh, especially children of AIDS victims, children of sex workers. And we have, um, uh, you know, children who have um, orphan children as well. So we have seen um, hundreds and hundreds of children getting trained in our homes and we have a program for HIV positive people that we call it Sunflower Project that we, around 350 women are registered with us and we help them with their basic, help them to come out of sex work if some of them are 
uh, with self-help loans and help them to come back into the society, integrate them back into the society. So especially the um, last 20 years, whenever the government rescues children uh, from sex trafficking or from any unfortunate background, uh, they have been sending the children to us and we were able to do rehabilitation and restoration uh, in our homes and put them back into the society. And um, now, last one year, we have started this project called Project Pearl. There is a story behind the project, but there's no time to explain the story. Uh, but it's been going extremely well with the amazing team that we have. Uh, and, um, you know, we've conducted, as you've already heard, what we have been doing with Project Pearl. But it's our privilege to have each one of you because we believe that each one of you are so important in influencing so many young girls and boys that you are part of. Okay, so um, I just want to share a couple of uh, small incidents that has happened. The children who have come to us so that you will have another perspective of uh, what really happens to children. Okay, two cases uh, that came to us. One case was this girl. This was actually, uh, they, they were able to identify this child in an awareness program in one of the communities that uh, uh, one NGO connected. So they had this awareness program and they had a counselor. Counselor counseling children. And that time one of the girls came and told her the story of her friend who is in the same community and said that this child had come and uh, spoken to this uh, friend about what has been happening to her. Her parents passed away and she was living with her uncle's family. So this uncle has been, you know, last few months, this uncle has been, they, they say that they groom these children, right? There's a word called grooming. So grooming has been happening to this child. You know, so slowly sexual abuse has been happening to this child where she, he would uh, sl uh, st uh, slowly started showing her small movies. So putting her on the lap. She is only seven years old, okay? The seven-year-old old girl has been put on the lap and slowly uh, giving uh, sl uh, nice movies to watch with and slowly it became into romantic movies and then it became into sexual uh, movies, you know, and then started, slowly started molesting this child. So this has been happening and she was so scared because she doesn't have parents and this is the only source of her life because she is living with her uncle. And that is the time where she was a... You know, she happened to share the story to her friend and this friend shared the story to the counsellor. And the counsellor approached CWC and then this child was able to be, you know, we were able to rescue this child and she, she was brought to us. And this child came into our home and uh, transformed her life altogether. She did her full education. She came out of uh, all that trauma with counselling. And then today she, uh, you know, she's uh, running one of the cafes. So look at the story that has transformed her life, you know. And I want to say another story as well, what has happened to one of the child where we couldn't help completely. You know, so it, it depends on like, you know, once a child comes to us, we can do our best for this child. So uh, another child uh, who has been, okay, I will, I will, uh, I will skip that and I'll t tell you another story that has happened. This child, we were able to rescue this girl who was uh, uh, 14 year old. The police actually rescued her from a prominent case in, in Goa when she was 14. This was like quite a few years back. And she was rescued by uh, the police with some other girls. All the other girls were able to, uh, you know, get a bail and come out. But this girl didn't have anyone because she was from, uh, she came from Mumbai. Okay. And um, so she was with us in, a, uh, in, 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 in the juvenile uh, prison. And when she was 18 years old, she had to be out of that place. And that's when they contacted us and said that, can you bail her out? So we went there to bail her out. And uh, the judge asked us, like, you know, she's a very, very difficult person. What have you got? What security have you got to, uh, you know, keep her? So we said, we don't have any securities. We have a security of love. That's all we have. So we knew that we had the courage, we had that courage that we could help this girl. So she came out and then she told me her story. You know, her story was when she is originally from Bihar, when she was nine years old, 
her mother, her own mother, sold her into prostitution to one of the ladies. You know, one lady came to her house and this uh, mother told the daughter, she's a very beautiful looking girl. Mother told this child, said, uh, why don't you go with this auntie? I have, they are, there are nine children in the family. I have so many children to take care of. She will take care of you. And she was taken at the age of nine and brought to Mumbai and she was getting groomed, you know. And uh, by the time she was 11, she was put into prostitution. By the time she was 12, she had a child. You know, so by the time she was pregnant, 13, she had a child. 14, she was brought to Goa and she was caught. And that was the story. And she, you know, transformed her life altogether. We were able to give her the basic training and education. And then she got, uh, got married. She's got two children. She's happily living in Mumbai. So these are the transformation that can happen to children when we recognize, when we have that passion, you know, put uh, whenever we work. So you have a great role to play, to bring transformation in the lives of so many. All these children who are coming to homes, you know, to the schools, are uh, so many of them ha have trauma in their lives. So I believe that each one of you can make a huge difference in their lives when you work with passion. And uh, with these words, I want to uh, close and uh, have a fantastic day. And I'm sure you are going to learn so much uh, through the whole day. And Shasia is going to, I mean, I, I can't even explain how amazing she is. But today she's got a sore throat. But we pray that everything is going to be fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Bina, for those inspiring words and the real-time experiences and facts that have been put before us. Um, uh, uh, we believe that half your battle is won only by awareness. Because that is the way we can help and reach out to people, if not 100%, at least 50%. And we have seen through our, most of our awareness sessions that we have inspired so many children and so many uh, community people who are unaware of uh, many acts and many laws and uh, you know the basic things about uh, social norms. And I believe that awareness is the key uh, to tackle any social problem. Uh, so yesterday we had a one-day training uh, just for Goa Police uh, on the Human Trafficking Act because we believe that. It's not only about training, you know, the community, the school, the children, the counselors. It's very important to even give training for the stakeholders because they are the major stakeholders who implement these kind of acts. So yesterday we had a, a very good session, one day session uh, on uh, ITP Act and uh, we had around 120 police officers from the rank of DGP to SPs and DYSPs and P PSIs and constables who attended the session. Uh, you know, with whole heart and went out with a lot of knowledge. Uh, it's, it's a knowledge for us too. Uh, with these few words, I would like to request Mr. Goen Parvatkar to kindly address uh, the uh, audience with these few words of wisdom. Namaste. 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 Very, we, uh, I was observing that you are uh, conjus in clapping also. The same way you are uh, conjus in words also. How is that? How is it going to work? Okay, you are all, all okay? Yes. All good? Okay, so today's program, uh, the social work and the people, those who work in the field of social work uh, are here. Uh, Madam Bina Philip, uh, the founder of uh, director, uh, founder director of this uh, NGO, uh, Shabnam Khan, Ado uh, advocacy manager, and uh, Say uh, Shajia Mak uh, it's so simple, but uh, it's been really difficult. <laughs> okay. Sajia Mukadam, JVI trainer. So she's going to train you. 
we consider or we con uh, whenever we have a monthly meeting i consider you are all trained but uh, the training is uh, not a complete phenomenon that you cannot co be completely trained the training is a everyday process like learning also is a everyday process so all of you the counselors those who have joined from uh, gdc and cci now uh, may i request uh, to raise your hands those who have come from gdc so that i so almost all are from gdc okay right, hands down please so today's society the we uh, live in a very complex society today as i believe because uh, there are so many development in the scientific developments these that at the same time the problems also are cropped in with the development the industrialization the nuclear family the society is not the same where we were brought up we had a joint family uncle uh, uh, and aunties and the grandfather grandmother now the nuclear family mother father one son or one daughter full stop so that is the status today plus industrialization when i was teaching the effects of industrialization we have we have seen uh, the slums growing in the even in the italy and uh, slum there was a different type of slums not like exactly the bombay slums but there was the effect of industrialization then every good brings something wrong also so today it is required that the people like uh, this uh, ngo or many people those who are thinking about society and trying to do something for the society with the help of government or independently that is uh, appreciable and i congratulate you for that and uh, i wish you all the best so <clears throat> in goa uh, our uh, politicians especially manohar parikar started this uh, scheme and uh, we are proud to say that this is a unique scheme in the whole of country in the schools uh, i uh, we had a meeting at uh, bombay some time back and uh, there were all the people uh, the those who run the school and in charge of the <coughs> this type of program they had come there and they were surprised that goa runs this type of uh, school uh, counseling scheme so it is necessary it is very much necessary today we see that the emotional uh, changes in the child due to mobile due to social other social disturbances the nuclear family the problem in the family no guidance at uh, uh, the, the guidance which we have to uh, we were having at our childhood from the grandmother just now today morning i have was I mean, my wife always says that you always remember your grandmother i always say that what she was saying at what time so i said yes she is my she was my icon at that time i still see her uh, the pic her picture in front of my eyes and i remember what she should say the proverbs how she is to mix in the society and she is to take me also with her now this is all lost so we were learning out of that we were taking a, a life lesson out of that today it is not there so it is your job the look after the child emotionally we see yesterday uh, we got a report that uh, 11th uh, 11th uh, standard uh, boy committed suicide how why when we have such a thing uh, such a system and these all the teachers are there these then still the child thinks of committing suicide so it's very painful because we are all bound we are we are human being but we are bound by a, a special relation that we consider now let like, uh, what is that relation every child every person every human being has got a relation to each other now suppose i will explain you suppose you walk on the road 
somebody falls you will just walk like that normally no what do you see what do you feel ah would not be that you uh, that is your expression why you feel that because there is a connection there is a soul connection atma parmatma connection is there that's why we feel like that so how can we leave some people uh, just in the problems the human trafficking this serious problem so goa is a tourism state so we are going uh, coming across so many cases uh, you good you uh, took the uh, <coughs> training session to the police department so these are the things that now we know we meet every every month and we discuss in the in the beginning i used to uh, get a headache after going early in the hall, meeting hall because so many cases so you are living in a negative negative atmosphere negative situation for that i suggested them i would say that here also because some other counselors are also there so <clears throat> what is that because finally you are also human being you are dealing these problems in the schools in the society at the same time you are also human being you cannot be uh, 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 be in that situation for 24 hours you have to come out of that situation how to come out how to give, be normal after uh, coming out of out of the school out of the uh, certain uh, counseling rooms i told you what did i what did i tell you what how to take care of your your mind and your uh, health meditation it's very very necessary one hour meditation is very very necessary for the counselors because you know you get sab kachra collect kar rahe na hai to kya कचरा है उसमें तो दो बात नहीं है है ना कचरा कचरा है समाज में यू कैन कैन यू डिनाई स्कूल में जाते हो प्रॉब्लम है आवाज तो बहुत कम आ रही है आर देर प्रॉब्लम इन द स्कूल Uh, are children emotionally disturbed yes so it's you are appointed for that if you are not normal how can you help the child to be normal we have to meditate na time me ona sir this is the best uh, mean uh, excuse i don't want say reason even excuse out of 24 hours if you cannot take one hour for yourself then you are the poorest person on the earth your bank balance may be anything your husband's bank balance may be anything your family bank balance may be may very high too. huh but you do not take out one hour out of 24 hours for yourself to make to make your healthy and be normal normal when i say normal ah kona kide mandal ah asha da dal mai no no i have no you are normal as she is smiling laughing she is giving you does she she is giving with everyone so uh, i wish you all the best for this training but i hope this is the, this will be uh, helpful to you many time what happens uh, i'm too sorry to say this but uh, it's a fact that many people in the government also now i'm uh, have uh, be, uh, i'm becoming very choosy and uh, because uh, any program any government program anywhere anywhere uh, send your counselors no i do not i'm not favoring that my counselors are not just uh, uh, the kurjo tapopak che log no the today they are come here they have left the schools they have they have left the school they have left their duty they have come today so you have to learn something more then it is worthwhile you have come to new bizarre scenes i have seen some people are coming late uh, okay i excuse i actually not excuse for the people those who come late but because this is a new place i don't know from where and where they are coming there is another program in amona our uh, two district uh, two taluka councillors 
are attending there. So the total schools are without counselors. All the schools in the Goa, in the state of Goa, are without counselors today. <laughs> so make the best use of this today's training. And next month we might meet to the uh, meet in the monthly meeting. Uh, some of you should uh, share the experiences here, and I keep. Uh, seriously keep watch where they go, whether they are treated well, because we, ex we expect them to work good. At the same time, we, ex we expect the people, those who call them, also treat them good, well. So, they are also human beings. So, uh, I just shared my, ex shared my experiences with you. So, I wish you all the best. Take the best training, best make, make the best use of this uh, today's training. And uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for those uh, awe-inspiring words. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to just get uh, some information across to you, sir, because uh, um, I have been.